And although you might think this is the stair build, compared, I can assure you it is not. But living in solitude, how did you study the art? Where did you get? Books. Books and cards. We postcards? Have, we have postcards. The kind um, of postcards you can buy at the Pierpont Morgan Ah, yes, those wonderful bookstore. ones. Well, mostly, um, I was given art magazines by people who, friends, who said, what can we give you? And I said, well, I'd love a subscription to an art magazine. But you had no money to buy them yourself, no. did you? And anything I, I liked the look of, I'd write to the gallery and say, have you got a card of that artist? And they'd send it back. Or I'd, um, I'd say to somebody, I'd like some postcards from a museum if you're going there, and they'd send them. And then I began to amass quite a lot of books because there were people who really wanted to give me an expensive present. Because, you know, art books are very yeah. expensive. I've now got nearly as many art books as there are in this room for mm -hmm. books. Uh, yes, I've got an enormous scholar's library. Well, when you would receive these books or when you'd get these postcards from museums around the world, what would you do with them? Would you? Well, books, of course, read and reread and prop them up yeah. to look at the pictures. Cards, put them on a little stand. And just contemplate them? Contemplate them, look at them. And this was something Oxford helped one to do, because as you know, at Oxford, especially with English, you read the texts, and then you had to reach right down into your psyche and pull out your own unmediated reaction to those texts and write it for your weekly essay. Mm. All the books about the text you'd read in the vacation, the actual term time is for reading the texts and, and the sort of naked exposure, which is very difficult to do, because you're, you, you have to force yourself to be utterly true. And this is what I'm doing in art. True to? True to how I have reacted to it, never to fake it, one way or the other. So to know how I feel about this work, how I feel as opposed to how other people feel, and how I am perhaps entitled to feel because I know a lot about the artist and his style, so that I'm not just, it's not just off the cuff, it's something responded to in the context of an artist's work. That isn't easy. But when you look at a piece of art, sister, what arouses your curiosity? What are you looking for? Is there some irresistible point of contact? I think if you are looking for something, you're in advance circumscribing what you will see. You have decided at some level. You can't afford to do that. You must go absolutely defenseless to the work. Um, I think if you know something about the artist, you can go defenseless with more confidence. Mm. But you must not let any biographical details or others' opinions sway you. You must be prepared to spend time. And that's why I think two or three works is as much as one can take in. And spend time with them. Look, perhaps walk away, come back. Look again, let your eye roam around until it begins to sort of flower within you, which it will do. Well, take for example, you have such an eye for detail, Degas is uh, the dance class. Yes. Mm. There, you, as you call attention in, 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 in the series, here's this young woman sitting on the piano scratching her back. Yes. And suddenly for the first time after I heard you say that, I, I begin to get inside the mind of the artist. Why did he choose that moment and that gesture over all others that were possible in a, in, in a, in a classroom like that. And you call my attention to that. I yes. had never noticed that before. That hand at her back. That's right. He really saw them as um, articulate animals, all those women. And like animals, you see, it was their bodily gestures. And what's interesting is one doesn't always think of a ballerina as an articulate no, well we, well, we don't, you see, but for, for Degas, uh, women were really a, a, a lowly form of existence. 
I'm slightly flattering him by saying he thought of them as articulate animals. <laughs> I didn't like to say just animals. But uh, he had in the highest degree that opinion that some poor benighted men still have, that women are not fully human. That's why he, he, he often compared them to cats.